Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and uh, today I thought we'd have a look at the, one of the first bits from my um, Mega eBay lot that I got and it's this, it's an Acorn um, Exemplar now there seems to be very 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 little information about these online um, I found a couple of websites that mention them but they all basically have exactly the same information on them and what this thing is, um, apparently in 1996, Acorn got together with um, Apple uh, in a 50-50 venture to create educational hardware. This is all I can um, really find out and this is one of the products that they actually um, produced together. Now what it is, is it's basically a network terminal. That's all you can really describe it as. It's um, is it, are they called a thin base client or something like that? I, you'll have to um, excuse me on the terminology. I must admit I'm not familiar with this. And there's so little information about this thing online. It's unbelievable. I'd expect there to be at least um, a bit more information there is. But apparently um, it runs a version of... Um, what's it called? Um, Risk OS. I think it's Risk OS that it runs. Um, a special cu custom version of it and it was designed to connect up to a network server and get all its um, data and its information off a network server and it was an early kind of like um, web terminal I think really when schools were just starting to get like internet in actual classrooms um, all I can know is uh, it didn't last very long I think in um, 1999 um, it all got sold out to um, Apple, I think they bought the whole project and um, Acorn had nothing to do with it. I think I even, didn't even think Acorn was still running by that point. But uh, yeah, it's certainly an interesting piece of hardware. Um, so I thought what we'd do today is um, take a look inside it, actually see what we've um, got inside it, and then perhaps see if we can actually get the thing to power up and see what it actually does. I don't know whether it's going to do anything, to be honest, being that we haven't got the server that it would have originally. Uh, run with and I literally can't find hardly any information at all like I said there's a picture of someone that's got one set up and it seems to be running um, Risk OS it's got a Risk OS menu on the screen anyway um, so like I said we'll get into it we'll have a look inside it and then we'll um, perhaps see what we can do about getting um, getting it powered up and seeing exactly what it does right let's uh, get the screws out of it I think it's only got four screws on the outside I don't think they have a provision for hard drive or anything inside them so uh, if it does have an operating system in it it's going to be on ROM that one's stiff, bloody hell I think that's been cross-threaded when it's been put in or it's the wrong screw well it's coming out now yeah I think that's been cross threaded now I do have two of these, this is the one in um, worse condition actually, the other one I've got um, cosmetically is in better condition but I thought we'd start with the uh, bad one when I say bad, I think the only thing that's really nasty about it is it should have a piece of plastic that covers I think we have a PMCA slot there and it should have a little window that goes over and it's missing on this one, it's there on my, the other one of these that I got so uh, let's have a look inside it anyway if we can get the ah there we are lovely dust on it okay and the wow it is really quite sparse in there there we go so we've got um we've got some memory now from what I could find online I think that's um 16 meg it's a 16 meg 72 pin sim we've got there the Cirrus Logic chip there I think is both the graphics um, processor and the CPU it's um, an ARM 7500 um, CPU used in these I think I think the very last of the um, A7000s used that um, 7500 processor as well uh, we've definitely got some ROM um, yeah we've got ROM 1 and ROM 2 there so it may and yeah it says uh, Risk OS NC 1.11 so it may, it, we may be able to boot into Risk OS um, straight off this thing um, I don't know we've got a network card obviously how it would um, communicate with its um, file server 
we do have a PMCA slot here um, this area here is to generate the power for it and that's the next thing that's going to be interesting um, this thing uses 16 volts, we'll look on the back here this thing uses um, 16 volts AC input and then basically this collection of um, components here converts that into the necessary voltage I mean it'll be t uh, there'll be 5 volts on here can't see anything that would really use 12 volts to be um, wholly honest no I really can't see anything that would probably use um, 12 volts there may be um, there may be something like um, an op amp for the sound or something like that that needs uh, 12 volts that would be the only reason I could think about uh, needing that because all this will be um, 5 volt logic not quite new enough to um, all be 3.3 volt. Oh, well, then again, I think the um, ARM CPU uses a very low voltage to run. Um, I've not done anything with any, like old ARM processors for a very, very long time. Not since I uh, messed about with my A7000. But uh, what I've, I've come up with a way of powering this thing up. And um, the problem was I hunted and hunted and hunted in all my junk to see if I had a 16 volt AC um, power supply, and I don't. I've got plenty of 12 volt power supplies, I've got some, um, <coughs> excuse me, 18 volt, um, I think it was off an old printer or something like that, AC. Um, and I have a load of, uh, a load of these. Not them, where is it? These things, and what these are, these are 24 volt um, lighting transformers. They're IP rated. I, I got a big box of these. I actually um, pulled them out of some trees um, one Christmas when um, the company I was working for was redoing the um, Christmas lights in a um, in a local town, and we was putting all new lights in. And every tree we come on had one of these transformers, just uh, either cable tied or gaffer taped um, somewhere up in the boughs of the tree. And um, obviously there were surplus to requirements, so I um, harvested them all and brought them home. And um, what we've got is a 24, a 240 volt to 24 volt um, AC transformer. Well, obviously, 24 volts no good for us because we need um, 16 volts. So what I've done is I've connected that up just through my uh, my safe block there. This is just a quick ghetto test just to see if we can actually get this thing to power up. And what I've got is I've got my uh, I've got my variac here. And what I've done is I've cranked the volume the voltage down on the variac so we're feeding 150 volts into that 24 volt tra transformer rather than the 240 volts it's expecting which will obviously, the way an AC uh, mains transformer works if you uh, drop the input voltage you um, drop the output voltage so I've got that set to 150 volts and that should hopefully mean we'll just get, um, get the meter get my uh, test meter here I found a, um, a suitable, I found a suitable connector there to go on the end. And uh, if we test this now, so I just connect that on there like that. And if I switch on the variac, we can see. If we look on the meter there, we've got um, it's slightly over 17. Let me just knock that down a tiny touch. There we go. We've got. Yeah, we've got our. It's close enough that. It's, oh, let's see if we can just knock it down another tiny little um, sneak. There we go. I think we've got. Yeah, it's close enough that we've got our um, 16 volts there. 16. It's just flicking onto 17, but um, it's close enough that, like I said, we've got our 16 volts. So hopefully, we can um, we can power this thing up. So it's not. 100% critical because it does fluctuate with your line voltage so I'm um, seeing our line voltage is anywhere between 240 and 250 volts um, that little fluctuation of um, a volt like that won't cause an issue so what I'm gonna do um, I've fished out an old Microsoft PS2 keyboard and I couldn't find a PS2 mouse I know I've got some somewhere but what I did find was I don't know whether this is going to work is one of them um, keyboard to um, sorry one of them mice to is it a key actually I don't I don't think that will work I think that's a keyboard one um, we'll see if we can get it to work with a keyboard anyway and see if we can get anything to um, come up 
and see if it'll uh, power up anyway. I'm just going to use the composite input on the back. We'll look on the back. Um, we've got a TV video output there, so hopefully we can use that. Uh, we've got a monitor output, so if we don't get anything off that, uh, I'll try hooking it up to say a VGA monitor or something and see if we can get it to um, output through there. But uh, for now, well, let's just uh, we'll connect up some audio just in case it gives some audio out, and we'll connect that up to video like that. And let's connect. Uh, We'll just disconnect the power for the moment, but we'll connect the power in like that. Let's, uh, put that around so you can see it. We'll connect that. We'll connect that up to the screen. Let's get the screen on. Right, that's composite input on the screen. So, if I um, drop the safe block, that should give us 16 volts to this unit, and we should see whether um, it does anything. So let's uh, let's shut that. Oh, nothing's going to happen because I've uh, I've pulled the wire out. <laughs> right, let's open that up again. Let's get this reconnected to the. Uh, so it is it is literally just a complete lash up this at the moment just to see if it's going to actually work alright there we go we've got 16 volts hopefully to the um, thing now it's, there we go yeah right we've got a, led, a red light if you look down here we've got a red light it's turned to ah we've got something on screen right now it says it's gone off again oh, some, hang on top cat client um, 26th of August 1998 it seems to keep flicking on and off I don't know whether that's um, some that could be this uh, crappy monitors doing something uh, doing something funny or it doesn't like the signal it seems to be giving us an, a um, network address anyway so I think it's looking for its server yeah looking for a boot up server boot TP server I think it says so the unit actually seems to work that's interesting it's, I was really hoping it'd come up with the old Risk OS um, GUI or something. Unless it doesn't. Just bear with me. I'm going to go and get a VJ monitor, and we'll see whether we um, get any better luck if we um, connect it up through the uh, VJ video port. So um, I will be back in a second. Okay, and I'm back, and I've uh, I've got it connected up to this crappy old um, Dell um, LCD monitor. So let's uh, let's see if we get any more luck running it through this monitor, or see if we just get the same. I should at least be able to read it perhaps a little bit better. So I'll uh, I'll reapply power to the unit. It seems to be doing something. Oh, it's exactly the same, but uh, I think we can at least read it this time. So we've got top. Oh, and it's gone off. Oh, so it just seems to do that. It just seems to come this up and then tries and then um, reboots by the look of it. I wonder. If, I've got, actually got the keyboard connected up as well. Um, I wonder if hitting anything on the keyboard does anything. Nope. Can't seem to get it to do anything. Yeah, it can't find its server, so it's obviously it's just like in a boot loop where it um, tries to find its server, can't find its server, and um, I wonder what would happen if I take the network card out. I wonder if it would then perhaps try and boot to um, the Risk OS, or does the Risk OS ROMs on this literally just do that? Do they just um, look for a server somewhere? I'll just try pulling the network card out of it and see whether um, that could force it to boot into any internal ROM. Because obviously this network card does appear to be removable. You know, it's it's an extra unit that's fitted. So let's uh, let's give that a try. Let's get you down so you can see what we're doing here. I am using that. Um, uh, my mother dropped by earlier on and. Uh, I got that camera 
that uh, camera that a friend um, dropped. Now I managed to get it to charge, I actually just uh, jammed the cable in so it charged and wrapped a bit of insulation tape around it and left it for a few hours and it did actually, uh, the battery charged in it okay. So I think it really does just need that, um, it does just need that uh, connector that DC jack replacing on it or at least re-soldering it. I just hate going inside things like that because it, it does work at the moment. Um, I will have to because I can't just leave it with the, the way it is at the moment unfortunately but I thought I'd do this video on it and just see what the quality is like see whether it's um, worth pursuing, worth actually going and um, doing anything with right well, we've got the network card out, let's see if that's made any difference let's uh, bring it up let's see whether it tries to boot any other way now ah! look at that! So there is a boot ROM, there's a boot ROM on this network card and if you remove the network card obviously it actually does boot to the um, RISC OS um, operating system. Now I don't think we can get very far by the look of this because it's obviously trying to find something but uh, and I have no mouse connected. But, so that, sh that shows promise, that shows that we may actually be able to do something with it. I really wish we'd find a um, PS2 mouse actually. I've got, ah, ah, bloody hell I found one. Right, let's try powering this back off and I'll reconnect the PS2 mouse and see whether we can actually uh, do anything. We're probably just stuck in this boot loop, but I wonder if it does have Risk OS, a proper um, graphic operating system under there somewhere. As far as I'm aware, this is the first time one of these has actually been shown on YouTube. I did search for um, Acorn Exemplar on um, YouTube and it came up with absolutely no matches. So uh, this could be the first um, showing of one of these Acorn Exemplar units actually on um, on YouTube. Let's uh, try that again. I've now got the mouse connected. Power it up. Well, the mouse works, but again, I can't do anything. I don't think I can get to a desktop or anything. It's just literally stuck in this uh, boot loop, unfortunately. Yeah, there's nothing, there's no hidden little menus or anything I can see. I can at least just move the, uh, move the cursor around the screen with the mouse. I wonder if you hold down escape or something? Could that be it? Right, well that's got us somewhere. Um, supervisor. Right, I don't, I really can't remember any of my um, Risk OS um, commands. Like I say, it's so, so long since I did anything with these. Root one. Root not found. File. Right, let's try cat. Cat works. So we've got a DIR, CSD, lib, boot, apps, fonts. So there's plenty of uh, the stuff on there, the stuff in the ROM by the look of it. Uh, So I, I, I honestly, um, I'm not sure what I'm doing. I think I'm going to have to do some research and um, try and remember how to use um, some of the Risk OS um, commands. Like I say, it's, it's, it's a very, very, very long time since I literally did anything with um, Risk OS. Uh, let's, try, let's try and run. Syntax run file name parameters. Right, so. Let's try unset. Unset not found. Let's try to. Ta 
no, I really don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just I'm trying DOS commands, and this, this definitely isn't DOS. I think it's uh, probably more akin to Linux than um, anything else. I so said we've got um, after typing cat, it's brought us DIR resources. Then it's got dollar options O2 run, and then um, CSD resources, and that says unset. Lib resources on set and URD resources on set, and then we've got um, boot DWR, apps DWR, fonts DWR, and resources DWR. So, like I said, last thing we'll try. Oh, that worked. Well, that's got us a bit further, hasn't it? Right, so we've got machine um, start was not completed successfully. Right, let's cancel that. Is it just going to boot round? Yeah, no, it's just booting back to this network connection could not be established. But, I can certainly now look at it more. I think there's a possibility we can actually get this to um, do something. Uh, yeah. I don't really want know much more what to say about it. Like I said, the only problem is I can find that so little information about it online. It's um, it's quite unbelievable. I'd expect to find more than just a couple of web pages, which are basically just um, parroting the same information. Let's have let's get you in and have a close look up at the board anyway. While um, I've got the camera, at least it can test how good the zoom on this um, camera is. So uh, I'll bring you forwards. Let's see if we can have a zoom in. Now, as I was saying, that is what I believe is both the um, video chip and the um, ARM processor in one um, big package. And it is marked uh, next to it, ARM 7500 FE CPU. Like I said, and then we've definitely got the OS ROMs there because they're marked OS ROM um, 1 and OS ROM 2. And they even say on them RISC OS um, NC 1.11, which is I presume what we're running. The caps look good, um, obviously I will do a better test than just look good, but you can usually tell when a cap's looking a bit manky, because the um, legs on the side of them, the nice shiny solder starts to discolour and look a little bit off, and on all these electrolytics I can see in here, um, all the solder around them is uh, lovely and shiny, it is really nice and shiny, so I'm not going to expect um, really to be a major capacitor issue in this thing. Um, so I will do the um, soldering iron sniff test at some point because that's the quickest, easiest way to actually see yes, something's definitely been um, leaking but I can't see any sign of corrosion really anywhere on the board at all in fact the board looks in really, really, really nice condition everything's um, surface mounting there apart from a few little things we've got um, a variable capacitor there um, we've got a crystal there which is obviously a through hole all the um, power supply caps in this section are obviously through hole, but pretty much most of the other things on the board are all surface mount. Obviously the connectors at the back are through hole. But um, there is lots and lots of surface mount um, components on here. Can't see a date on the board up to now. Um, it says it's an issue 1. And it just says NC1 main board. Uh, reference design. But no, I can't see um, I can't see a date on here. But I, I'm guessing anywhere between 1996 and 1998, because I think that's when um, I think by 1999, like I said, the project had pretty much died out, and um, any interest in it was uh, flogged off to Apple. I think Apple paid um, three million pounds for um, their half for Acorn's half of the um, joint venture, and Apple. I don't know what Apple did with it after that, to be totally honest. Uh, probably not very much, and like I said, Acorn didn't. I was actually I'm even surprised that Acorn was still existing in uh, 1999. I thought they'd um, already gone belly up by then, but obviously they must have carried on a little bit longer. Um, the PMCA slot on the front does look sort of interesting. I mean, I've, I, I think I did see something on the um, line. I've not been able to find it again. It was when I was um, hunting around literally late last night after I got this thing trying to find some information. 
about actually using that to be able to load software and boot things um, using the uh, using basically the CF um, card there with a the compact flash uh, adapter in it and a CF uh, sorry the PMCA slot there with a PMCA to um, compact flash adapter and a compact flash card in it and um, using that to be able to boot and load um, software on here but again, like I say, I'm not 100% sure being the fact that all I seem to be able to get it to do at the moment is um, bring this screen up like this. Oops, wrong way on the camera. I'm still obviously getting to grips with this camera. But it does have an um, optical zoom, which is very, very nice. But yeah, at least, at least we're getting it to do something. It's not completely dead. Actually, the power button now um, responds to it without that network card in there. Well, it switches it off and on. So obviously, like I say, obviously um, there is a BIOS on this network card, and that's why it wouldn't initially um, fire up. That does look suspiciously like ten base T. Okay, let's look up the part number on it. But ten base T Ethernet adapter. I wonder if I could actually. Um, connect a computer up to use as a file server but I need to know what um, software it would work on and see if we can get this thing to connect perhaps to a network it might be worth a try see if we can get it to do something like that anyway, I'm going to leave this video here for now it literally was just a um, a quick tertiary look over this um, rather interesting piece of equipment like I said I can find very 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 little solid information about this like I said, there's only a couple of websites really actually have any information on it and they all seem to just, literally, they just seem to parrot the same um, same thing, which is literally what I've just said to you. That it was a joint venture between Acorn and Apple in the very late 90s. Um, it only lasted a few years. And it was some form of um, early like, internet terminal for use in schools. So um, you, you basically know everything that I know about it. Um, if anyone does have any more information out of this I would really really um, appreciate you know, you're letting me know because obviously I would like to um, take this thing further and perhaps do um, do some more with it. Um, see if I can actually get it to do something because I mean at the moment it's an interesting curiosity. I believe there's um, the Museum of Computing History has one of them in their collection. Um, and I've I found one been, that had been sold on eBay um, some time ago, and like I said, there's a couple of other websites online that just basically have the same information as the Museum of Computing History have on it, and that is really the only information I can find. There's even there's not really even any pictures of them running very much online, so it is um, it is certainly a rare probably a rare thing and um, certainly quite interesting for what it is. I say it really is at the very, very end and the death throes of um, Acorn computing this thing. But anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. I hope you enjoyed that little look over and look inside this thing and show that we've actually managed to get it to do at least something. So um, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for watching and goodbye.